Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. There is no other way to start this video apart from the saying that I dropped a freaking mage blood. Here is the clip. I cannot believe it. I didn't have a reaction when it happened. I just sat there staring blankly at my screen. I just thought to myself, what the fuck? How? Like, how is this possible? So I dropped a foil mage blood from the void reliquary within the first week of Necropolis, and this is in SSF. So extremely extremely helpful towards my build i will be using this item for every build until the end of the league i'm super happy i'm never going to sell it because it now has sentiment towards me the fact that it's foil the fact that i dropped a mage blood from the re reliquary is just insane and i am astonished and i am beyond happy okay so with that out the way welcome everybody to the week one and two recap of necropolis league of my ssf league starter which is an explosive trap of shrapnel trickster so in this video i'll go through my offense and defense i'll show you my uh, build and my items and how things are going i will also show you uh, some gameplay i'll be running gameplay in the background while i talk over it and i'll talk about my pob as well a little bit and then just to finish the video off i'll talk a little bit about my thoughts and feelings about necropolis the league the changes and whatnot so without any further ado let's get right into my build first of all let's go through the defense because that is what i prioritize in any build i like all my builds and all my characters to be tanky i just don't like dying so even though i don't play hardcore i always always prioritize that so first off effective hit pull doesn't really mean shit so i'm not going to talk about it because it's influenced by so many modifiers it doesn't actually mean a whole lot what actually does mean something though is the max hits starting from my lowest chaos max hit obviously that is very low and i'm very susceptible to chaos damage that is my biggest downside so far i'm very squishy when it comes to poison and chaos so if there's anything i need to work on it's that anyway my elemental max hit fire cold and lightning i'm very happy about that my cold and lightning is at a very good place at about 60,000, and my fire a little bit less at about 50,000. However, I'm very happy about it. I feel very tanky when I'm going up against those elements. My Fizz at 30,000. It's okay. It's pretty decent. Um, I'm not the most tanky against Fizz. Within my build, I convert some of the Fizz damage that I take into elemental damage, which actually makes me tankier to Fizz than it seems like. So I'm quite happy about my max hits right now. Obviously, it'd be nice if they were higher, like 70, 80,000, but that requires a lot of min-maxing. So as it stands right now, pretty tanky and I'm quite happy about it. So this is a hybrid character, runs off of life and energy shield and I've got uh, an equal amount of both. My life is sitting about 3.4k and my energy shield about 3.2k. So all together that's way above 6k and I'm very happy about that and I feel pretty comfortable with it. Uh, obviously further on min maxing, it'd be nice if I could get my energy shield you know, above 4k. I don't know about life. I don't know how much more I can squeeze out with my life. I can definitely get a couple hundred more, maybe upwards of the the high the highs of 3,000. But I really want to get my energy shield above 4,000. Moving on then, evasion rating. This is an evasion build, so I've got 40,000 evasion rating, which equals to about a give or take 81% evade chance. I do not really have armor. I've only got a 13% physical damage reduction. I have like no armor. So this is all evasion. However, in the future, I do want to implement at least a little bit of my armor coming from maybe the determination, the aura. Um, my block chance, 25%. That's just uh, standard from the shield. It'd be really nice to have uh, a lot more attack and spell block, but I'm just not quite sure how to implement that into this build just yet. And then spell suppression, I've got 100% chance, which is crucial and really nice for this build and makes me feel really tanky my res is all capped apart from cold i'm five percent off of capping it that's not really a big problem though i can cap that using a tattoo which i've done for my lightning i don't really need that for my lightning anymore so i can take that off and replace it with a cold tattoo and then my movement speed modifier is between 50 and 70 percent depending on what kind of silver flask i run with my mage blood so i've got two silver flasks i got one that makes me immune to freeze and chill which i use for harder maps like tier 16 maps and so on uh it makes me makes me a little bit slower i'm 
using that flask, I'm at about 50% movement speed modifier. And then I've got another flask, which doesn't make me immune to freezing chill, but it makes me have a 70, nearly 80% movement speed modifier, so I'm quite zoomy. So I use that for lower tier maps, maybe for like farming essences if I just want to zoom through the map or something like that, or farming Kerak missions. Defense done, moving on to my offense. When I've selected all explosions hitting on my explosive trap of shrapnel, I'm standing at over, just over 2 million hit DPS. And I've got an 86% crit chance, so I nearly crit all the time. And my crit multiply is 427%. Then we have to take my hit DPS of 2 million and multiply it by 4.2, which is about 8.5 million hit DPS, which is quite comfortable. However, this is all explosions hitting and this doesn't always work because enemies move. So you also have to take into account average explosions hitting, which is about 623,000 hit DPS, 4.2 multiplier equals about 2.5 mil hit DPS or 2.6 mil, something like that, which once again is pretty comfortable. However, definitely not a boss killer, definitely not an uber killer, definitely not where I want to be. The whole point of this build and why I'm doing an explosive trap of shrapnel is because I want to be a boss killer. I want to take down at least one uber. I want to have a real good go at T17 maps. So as of right now, obviously my damage is quite lacking. However, it's enough to get me through the maps that I need to get to. It's enough to get me my void stones. I've got two out of four void stones right now. So it's more than enough to just kind of carry me through mid game and really get me into end game so I can really start farming those important items that will give me millions of DPS. Uh, so going through my gear, uh, obviously the most uh, important part of it is a mage blood, but that is just due to pure luck. But I'll briefly touch on it. With my mage blood, I'm running a jade flask for evasion. I'm running a diamond flask for crit and a silver flask for movement speed. I could replace a silver flask with a granite flask to be more tanky, to have more armor. However, my character becomes really slow because I haven't got like movement speed on my boots or anything like that. And I just don't like the way it feels. It feels really bad when it's really slow. So I run a silver flask, like I mentioned before, either with immunity to freeze and chill or with even more increased movement speed and, and, and increased effect. I also run a taste of hate uh, was quite lucky to get that from the Nameless Seer, which converts some of my physical damage taken to cold damage, makes me that little bit more tanky uh, against physical damage. My other gear then, I will put my gear on the screen right now. Uh, I will not go through every single individual piece because that's quite boring and this is all susceptible to change. Therefore, generally say what my gear is going for and it's just a lot of energy shield. Uh, as much life as I can, uh, obviously getting my elemental resistances all capped. And then another important part is uh, I've got two diamond rings to try and get my crit as close to 100% as I can. I've also got uh, increased mana regen on my ring, on one of my rings and a POW amulet, which is increased mana regen, uh, which is also anointed with Dreamer, which is extremely important and you have to do this for this build because this build is extremely mana hungry. So you need to invest a lot into mana regen and anointing it with Dreamer. Other than that, I've got strength and attributes on my build because you need some strength on this build because otherwise you won't hit some required thresholds. And also obviously crit, a lot of uh, global crit chance or crit chance for spells and a lot of crit multi. Those are all important for your damage. And then apart from that, uh, just like spell damage, cast speed, attack speed and just like general things that make the build feel better and increase your offense and defense. The really important things that I'm missing from this build is plus one level to all fire skill gems or to all physical skill gems and I could have, you know, I could have that both on my uh, main weapon and my, sh uh, my shield uh, because increasing the level of your explosive trap of shrapnel is a huge damage boost and is probably a priority um, I just haven't been lucky with my craft I haven't been able to get a plus one to fire physical spells um, yet so that is my priority um, but other than that I'm running a unique shield it's a it's a shield from the cortex the synthesized boss and I'm running this shield because it provides me with a lot of evasion rate and energy shield uh, provides me with plus one level of socketed lightning gems which is not really important 
but I use it for my Skitterbots, so then my Skitterbots are level 21. It also provides me with level 20 Lightning Aegis, which makes me more tanky against Lightning Damage, which is quite nice. And it just has a bit of movement speed, increased attack and cast speed, and a bit of mana. So, quite nice shield. Uh, before running a shield, I used to run a Dawnbreaker, which is the unique shield from the Syrian Exarch, because it provides you with um, uh, physical damage taken as fire damage makes me more tanky against physical damage which is, which is nice and it scorches enemies in close range that you block uh, and scorch is a massive uh, damage increase in this build along with brittle so that was a nice source of scorch however the shield is a armor shield and i don't run armor so it wasn't that helpful and it it required a lot of strength to equip which at the end just turned into a massive headache trying to fit strength in my build I had to put it on my items in my tree and it took a, took up a lot of space so when I got the shield from the, from the synthesized boss I ended up switching to it right so that is basically my build just the last couple of things that I wanted to touch on is something a little bit funny and it's the fact uh, of getting the transfigure gem uh, explosive trap of shrapnel to drop I literally only got it yesterday and that's why it's level 19 not level 20 um, because I have run uh, lab the lowest level of lab uh, between 30 and 50 times to get this gem over the past two weeks and it was just not dropping I was just incredibly unlucky um, I had the other version uh, explosive trap of magnitude I had that drop twice and I'm pretty sure I had every single transfigure gem every single green uh, transfigure gem in the game to drop apart from explosive trap of shrapnel and it was extremely annoying and it's one of the reasons why this video is so delayed I wanted to make a week one update, but instead this is a week one and two update because I just could not get Explosive Trap of Shrapnel. But anyway, I've got it now. My Atlas, I'm uh, two maps away from completing the Atlas. I'm just two unique maps away from completing it. Uh, but that might take a little bit of time because I am SSF, so I can't just buy them. So I'll just be farming Kirak missions and uh, uh, scouting reports until, until I get my Atlas done. That's another thing I wanted to get my Atlas done before I made a video, but because it's an SSF, it might be a bit tricky to get the last couple of unique maps. I can't just buy them, so as I've said before, but I think 113 out of 115 is good enough. I said 99% done. Uh, it should be done, you know, in it, within the next couple of days, hopefully. And I just wanted to get my build to a decent point, you know, to be able to run uh, tier 16 maps and start getting my void stones. As I've mentioned, I've got two out of four. Because usually when I got onto play, I would get some upgrades within a couple of hours and my build would kind of change. And I, I thought to myself, if I made a video about my build uh, within the first week, I'd, uh, I'd publish the video and probably within a couple of hours, my build could change completely. So I thought it's a bit counterproductive. I thought I would just really put my head down and get my build to a, to a good point before I started to make a video about it, which is right now. Because uh, I feel like the next steps for me is to really farm out the, the really good items that I need to give me a lot more DPS Which is some of the stuff I talked about previously in the video and then briefly touching upon Necropolis League I think it's a pretty good league. Obviously, I'm a bit biased because I had major plot drop So that's always going to be something memorable and this is always going to be a league That's going to be up there for me just because of that drop, but not talking about that um, I actually do like this league. I like the crafting. I haven't done a full Gravecraft yet because it's quite time consuming, but I will. But I have used the Gravecraft for a couple of my items. It is quite good. Um, you don't need to do a full Gravecraft to get a decent item as long as you know what you're doing, as long as you know what modifiers to pair with what and what to block out and so on. Uh, I don't like the fact that it was forced upon you during leveling, during the campaign to do the league mechanic. I think that should be optional. But it's alright that it's forced upon you in maps because that's what the whole league is about. And I actually do like the league mechanic. I think it's quite... I actually think it's very rewarding. I had two maps where I dropped over 80 Chaos Orbs each. Um, just from two maps. And there's a lot of potential in, uh, in the rewards in this league. The Scarab Overhaul is absolutely great. One of the best changes they've ever done. I've really been enjoying pairing the Scarabs up and seeing what I can do with it. The tier 17 maps, also a great change that they have ha they've had a lot of criticism but um, I think they're in a okay state right now I haven't done any so far so I can't really talk about it too much but I do plan on getting to tier 17 maps sometime soon if I can do them so generally I'm quite positive on this league so far I'm quite excited to carry on playing it and see where I can get to I will try my best to put out updates on this build as much as I can 
Maybe you want to, I'm finished with this build. I'll make my own little guide on it. But this is a fearless Dumbo build. I will link his channel and his comprehensive guide in the description below. So make sure you check him out. If there's anything that you need, uh, he is your man. Uh, he, he has a lot more information and is a lot more in-depth about his build than I could ever be. So make sure you check him out. But other than that, thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you all have a wonderful evening, night or day. And I'll see you around.